Stating our values is not enough. Our ability to live our values is what determines our ability to break new ground, to deliver consistently, and to win at just about everything. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, crew. Good to see you. Thank you, as always, for being a loyal listener. I appreciate each and every one of you. Listen, we all know the importance of stating our values, but how come we don't place the same importance on living them? And what can we do about it? Well, first, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we focus on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. Remember, guys, if this helps you, tell your friends. Well, look, I'm sure we've all read the Agile values and the Scrum values over and over. And in fact, many of you encourage your teams to have their own set of shared values beyond the stated Agile values. But of course, having a set of values is never quite enough. How many times has your shared values poster been shuffled over to that little spot in the corner where the plumbing rough in sticks out a little bit? And nobody ever gets to see the values that we hold so dear. The values that we know if we could just practice them, not just preach them, things would be different. Things would be better. So why does this happen? Well, there's three major reasons. The first problem is that having a set of values is useless if we're not aware of them. And you might be tempted to say, well, how often does that really happen? Well, take a look around. A great many people who practice Agile or Scrum, that is to say coaches, Scrum masters, are not even sure what the Agile or Scrum values are. They can't possibly be. Otherwise, they wouldn't be allowing things like excessive documentation, eternal long-range planning, and allowing detailed budget management to take precedence over blowing your customers' minds. It's all in there. It's easy to get inspired by it and connected to it, but for some reason, we don't. Well, if we're not constantly communicating them, sharing them, and exemplifying them, it ain't going to work. So the first thing you need to do is move that poster back to the front of the room. Your ethos, your shared values, your shot across the bow needs to be there and present and memorized. You need to see it each and every day until their practice becomes automatic. But of course, it doesn't matter whose set of values we're talking about the agile values that have been handed to us, or the team values that we bother to discuss and forge together. The truth is this. If we don't express what those values look like in action, it's unlikely that people are going to take the right steps or do the right things in service of those values. It's one thing to say, for example, that we value communication. But what does communication really look like in the moments when it matters? Well, it means the moment we know something is wrong, that something will go off schedule, that something is bigger or smaller than we thought, or something is blocked, we communicate. And we communicate using a set of priorities and principles. Maybe that's in-person first, then Slack, then text message, then phone call, then email. Whatever we decide we value, we have to put some words around how that looks on the floor. Because if we don't do that, how can we tell if we're doing it right? And how can we learn if we're doing it wrong? So that brings up the very last element of effectively living your values, which is you got to measure them. See, that's the last part of the problem. If we don't honestly and openly measure ourselves against our fidelity to our values, then we're not pushing ourselves to exemplify them. So that means when someone lives the value today, let's imagine something goes wrong and someone on the team communicates it fearlessly and rapidly. And that allows a solution or a conclusion to arrive much quicker and much more effectively. We celebrate that value in the room. We stand up, throw a round of applause, however you celebrate. And it also means that when we spend time in retrospectives, 
we're taking a moment to ask ourselves, did we live this value? Were there times when something could have been communicated, should have been communicated faster or better? And because we didn't communicate faster or better, we missed an opportunity to crush a goal, hit a home run, impress a customer, or save ourselves some serious pain. Now, if you're not being honest about those outcomes, if you're not being honest about your performance when you spend time on reviewing it, then the whole point of inspecting and adapting is kind of useless. And also, hey, what gets measured gets done. So the things we hold each other accountable to matter. So let's give this one final think through. Where you're not getting the results that you want, because you're not displaying the behaviors that you claim to value, whether those are agile or scrum values, or the values that you arrive at jointly as a team, then it's probably your ability to stay true to those values with bold and unmistakable action that's at fault. So as a leader, here's what you can do. Number one, take time to identify the values that we all share and are all bought into. And again, that can be through joint communication and prioritization, or you can simply start by inheriting the values of Agile and Scrum. Choose the ones that are most meaningful, that resound highest with the team, and put those ones at the top of the list. Make sure that they're clearly communicated. They need to be in a place where people can literally see them every day. How many times do we read inspiring things or pledge allegiance to a certain flag or a certain principle and then quickly forget what we read and forget what we committed to? By communicating them clearly and often, make it your screensaver, put it at the front of the room. Sometimes I like to make it the first visual when you're doing a demo or when you're doing a retrospective, shoot it up on the wall so people can see it. But all that communication will be meaningless unless you ensure that those values are well described. And by that I mean you have to describe what it looks like in action, in practice. Now effectively, it's a definition of done. So this should be no surprise to any of you. It's just a question of making sure that that clarity is in place for your shared values. And remember, you may not know exactly what these look like when you first get started, but put something down. Get some foundational agreement and then test them and fix them when they break. And then finally, make it part of your practice that this is how we celebrate and measure each other. These are the things we want to be held accountable to so we can be fearless now. When we look at our colleagues or when we look at each other as a team in the format of a retrospective or a performance evaluation, however you want to call it, these values and the definition of how they look when done and done right should be the yardstick that we're using to say, where can I improve? How can I get better? What are we saying collectively as a team, but not doing and why? I mean, these are the important questions, guys. This is where the fearlessness and the courage comes into it. We have to be willing to be evaluated against our fidelity to our own core values. And when you do that, you'll find that these tiny frameworks are far more important than the frameworks that are given or sold to you as some kind of project management structure. Give people a chance to be true to the values that they say they themselves hold most dear and watch what happens. Give it a try and let me know. Folks, you can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. Appreciate you tuning in. And until next time, stay badass. Badass.